Hello, doctor. Thank you for seeing me today. I don't know if you can help me or not. I got so many things on my mind right now. It all started when I went to go visit my friend Johnny. He inherited this cabin from his uncle recently and he asked me to meet him there because something strange was going on and I don't, I don't know what. The cabin is just outside of Windsor, you know, the Canada side. We've been friends for a long time. We used to play hockey together here in Detroit. So I drove out there right after work. Noises, more like feelings deep in my head. Got real bad when I went through the tunnel. It only takes 15 minutes to get through the tunnel, but something was different. I was more aware of time, moving slower. It felt like 30 minutes or more. I checked the clock, only 15 minutes. On the Canada side, it's another hour up Highway 61. I put some music on. During the drive, I got worried. This low pitch ringing in my ears. I don't have tinnitus, but I think it was like that. But low sounds. The sounds were all over, everywhere. Somehow, outside, inside my head. Anyway, when I got there, there was no sign of Johnny. Even worse, the place was a dump. It looked like no one had been there in years. On a table, I found an antique music box and a note from Johnny. It just said, gone to find the answer from this music box, J. I played the music box several times. The music was strange. I don't get it. But it got in my head. It was asking a question. Or maybe it was an answer to the low ringing noises. Suddenly I felt like I needed to go find Johnny. The song of the music box played in my mind, but outside there was the low droning sounds again. I followed them. As I was walking, I felt more awake and more alive. Everything in my ears was louder, all my senses were stronger. I, I tasted the fog. It tasted like pine cones. I could see in the dark uh, details, uh, particles. Time was slowing down again. I felt the temperature rising. And I kept going, and, and there it was. Not my friend, but this big, huge, quartz-type rock. Uh, there was light coming from the inside of it. The sound was coming from this rock. No sign of Johnny. Back at the cabin, I made a fire and I tried to go to sleep. I decided I would drive back to Windsor tomorrow morning and file a missing persons report for Johnny.
Must you always do that? Do what? That. Slam the door. You can't just close it. You always slam it. Give me a heart attack. Here, I got something for you. I'm just really excited about this case. The, the missing person? Have you read this guy's story? They say he went up to the abandoned cabin of Highway 61. That place is famous. <laughs> Gosh, listen to you. That place is famous. That place should be condemned. I would burn it down. So, uh, it's the owner finally dead. You know about that big crystal rock, right? It's right near the cabin. Well, actually, it's not a big crystal anything. It's more like a million years of saltwater deposits. Natives say if you listen real close, you can hear the sound of the ancestors behind the rock. It's pretty cool, huh? Some guy took some audible seismic readings. Took what? Audible and seismic readings. Recordings, really. Found out that there's this very quiet, low-pitched sound due to the pressure of the water beneath the mountain and the rock. It's very quiet, it's very low, it's very soft. Scientists call it infrasound. Infrasound? <laughs> Where do you get this stuff? Yeah, it's a real thing. People go crazy hearing it. There's this documented case of this guy on the International Space Station. He keeps hearing these super low frequencies, you know. He's up there in isolation for over a year. When his partner comes aboard to join him, he pulls a knife on him. Are you even listening to me, Lowell? Slow down, Mr. Science Guy. We're going there right now. This guy filed the missing persons. What's his name? I don't like him. The name's Mark Peters. What do you mean you don't like him? You've never met him. Neither have I. This is Joe Corral bringing you the highlights of tonight's end of the season match between the Detroit Panthers and the Grand Rapids Hawks. Whoever wins this game goes on to the state semifinals next week. The Panthers' offense dominated tonight with 18 shots on goal to the Hawks' 11 shots on goal. However, the Hawks' defense outperformed the Panthers. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, no spectators were allowed in the stands, but that didn't stop either of these teams from putting on a great show. At 1 minute 44 into the first period, the action started with the Panthers' first offensive run against the Hawks' defense. However, both Cochran and Benatar of the Panthers were unable to score. The action continues scoreless for the first 15 minutes, and then Deaver for the Hawks easily gets through the sleepy Panther defense to make this successful drive, putting them on the scoreboard one to nothing. Late in the first period, the Panthers tried this combination, Cochran to Peterson, to Benatar. No go, shot blocked by the Hawks. On the buzzer of the first period, the Panthers try again. Peters to Benatar, shoots and scores, tying the game at one to one. Early in the second period, Meyer for the Hawks gets around the Panther defender and scores. The Hawks now lead 2-1. At seven and a half minutes into the second period, Cochran for the Panthers makes this bold steal, but could not convert it into a goal. Halfway through the second period, Peter shoots, blocked, and Benatar is there to sweep it in. Panthers tie it up 2-2. Two two. Third period and the Hawks are not giving up. Myers to Deaver, passes back to Myers. Gets around the Panther defenders, he shoots and scores! The Hawks lead again, 3-2. to two. 11 minutes into the game, Cochran makes a run in Deaver, pushes him into the boards. Looks like a penalty that the referee may have missed. Five minutes left in the game, Panthers working for another goal. Peters to Benatar, Benatar to Cochran, he scores! That ties it up once again, 3-3. Three to three. Two and a half minutes remaining, face off near the Hawks net. Peters gets the puck to Benatar. He shoots, oh, too high. Less than two minutes on the clock. Panthers have got their mojo working. Peters to Benatar to Cochran. Cochran shoots, no go again. Blocked by the Hawks goalie. 10 seconds on the clock. Panthers make one more power play. Cochran to Peters. 
Peters to Benatar. Benatar scores with four seconds remaining. That will be the game. Now that's what I call intensity. The Detroit Panthers have beat the Grand Rapids Hawks 4-3 and will go to the state semifinals next week. This is Joe Corral signing off. Yes, we beat him. <laughs> yes. You were great, man. You, me, Dave. What a team. You set me up, shot on goal. He scored. Woohoo! Yeah. Yes. We're on fire. We all were on fire. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but mostly me. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> mostly you. That's right. like an email from our Canadian neighbors. Uh, I'm gonna help with a missing person. Well, let's get started. Name is uh, Johnny Cochran. No photo, no address, no number. Detective Leo Marshall, Detroit PD, please provide a full copy of the Johnny Cochran Missing Persons Report. Thank you. Meanwhile, let's see what we can get with just a name. Where are you, Mr. Johnny Cochran? Michigan driver's license. Four possible matches. Former addresses. 13 possible matches. Court records. No matches found. Hmm. No prior complaints or arrests for any of these Johnny Cochrans. Well, good for them. Dad owns the rink, my man. Yeah, thanks a lot for opening it up and letting us practice tonight. Sure, what are friends for? Hey, listen, you guys want to come inside and take a look at the safe? What for? My old man keeps a bunch of dough in there, and sometimes I like to help myself, you know? Really? You mean you steal from your father? I prefer to think of it as a gift he gives to his loving son. Hey, that's, that's all you, man. That's, that's not for me. 